Since we're on the verge of exposing fake martial artists whose only work is to fool people out to earn some money, let's put another title into it. Exposing Fake Martial Artists. Since the admiration of martial arts movies from the 90s, people are desperate to learn some fighting techniques, just so they could look cool and groovy. But that's one hell of a way for phonies to make some extra cash. Jay Kiraz. Just like others on this list, Jay is also an aspirant of fake martial arts. In 2015, Jay opened his martial arts gym and announced himself as a black belt in jiu-jitsu. For most naive who don't know what a black belt is used for, it's a karate belt that's used for giving rankings, meaning different colors represent different expertise. The black belt represents the master in different martial arts. Anyway, when he opened his gym, soon he became popular and got a lot of little students in a very short time. So the BJJ police wanted to know if he was legitimate or not. For that, they sent Mike Palladino, a real black belt holder. So Mike went out to his gym and told him to brawl with him for a few minutes. After knowing what was Mike Palladino was here to do, he simply refused to go head-on-head head with him. When it was confirmed that he was a scam, his entire gym was shut down. The so-called George Dillman. Meet George, the fraud who was once a black belt martial arts instructor of the year back in 1997. Soon, he became a trendy name who supposedly had real martial arts skills. But the truth can't be long hidden. His most famous fraud move was something called the Chi. In this, the Chi technique, he claimed that he could knock out an opponent with a slight touch down the neck. A little pressure and the opponent will be down in no time, which itself seems a little bizarre, to be honest. But anyway, the so-called technique was put to test in a 2005 National Geographic TV show he was asked to put his no-touch knockout into action. In this program, he was seen to fail drastically. Hey, what type of fraud says, I am a cheaper? So he came up with a lie that if the opponent's tongue is in the wrong place while doing the technique, it will not affect the opponent. I don't know if I should say that on film, but if the guy had his tongue in the wrong position of the mouth, uh, that can also nullify it. He went on one by one to test it on the present people, but failed. There's no science to either the tongue placement or his so-called technique. For years, he'd been making money by teaching fake martial arts techniques to young students, and the students were playing along with them all the time. Steven Seagal A lot of you guys will be aware of Hollywood star Steven Seagal. Now, some of you may know him for his performance, and some of you for being a martial artist. So is Steven Seagal a martial artist? Now, the answer is varying. Yes, he is a martial artist who's aware of karate and broadly knows Aikido. In his past, before becoming a celebrity, he had run several Aikido schools and is a legitimate high-level black belt holder. But here's when things get interesting. He may be a martial artist, but he isn't the spark plug that he represents himself to be. He lives in his delusional world where he thinks he's an unbeatable master. He was beaten down by a real badass, Gene LaBelle, who's an American MMA fighter, boxer, judo player, wrestler, and so on. He gagged Seagal out when he tried to mess with him. Seagal was also highly criticized by Joe Rogan, a UFC commentator. He said that Seagal Aikido is useless and will certainly not work against a professionally trained fighter. To make him less of a man, he was also accused of sexual harassment and that he used to beat his ex-wife on different occasions. Yanagi Ryukin. Remember this guy from our previous video? If you don't, let me introduce you to another Aikido master, Yanagi Ryukin. He is deadly ill-famed for his no-touching win. In his gym, he used to knock out the students without even touching them. In meaningful words, mind control, as you can see in these clips, he used to throw his students away with just a slight move of his hands. Ridiculous. I bet he would have paid these people to do his bidding, or why would they make a fool out of themselves? Here we have an amazing video of him getting beat up. To show off to his students, he challenged the MMA fighter for $5,000 in 2006. In the first round, the fighter just tries to dodge his attacks, but as soon as he realizes he's fake, he jumps on him. On the second try, he immediately delivers a series of punches and kicks to his face and knocks him to the ground. At the end of the match, he was not even embarrassed in front of his students, but also had to give the MMA fighter a large sum of money. Jean-Claude Van Damme. I know what you're thinking. Is Jean-Claude a fraud too? I'm sorry to say, but partially, yeah. Just like Steven Seagal, before his career as an actor, he was a professional kickboxer. 
His kickboxing record was 18 wins and a single loss, while all the wins were KO. While in contact fights, he played 48 matches with 44 wins and 4 losses, so there's no doubt he was a great fighter and martial artist. But like I said, is he a fraud? Kind of, yeah. Remember his blockbuster movie Bloodsport from 1988? Well, the story it was based on was bogus. To remind you a little about the story, Jean-Claude played the character Frank Dux, who was trained by Senzo Tanaka in his teens. After the death of Tanaka's son, he trains Dux as his son and makes him join the clan. When he grew up, he joined the military, where he got an invitation on behalf of Senzo's son. The illegal tournament was called the Kumite, which he happened to join for his clan despite military disapproval. Another reason why this movie went viral was the fighting styles and spectacular training montage. It's considered one of the influential martial arts movies of all time. But the story was bogus and fraudulent, thanks to the LA Times who uncovered the truth behind the movie and called it macho fantasy. John Kean. Meet another man possessed with making macho fantasies. Just like Bloodsport, his story has been amplified by the right use of media too. He soon became a famous martial artist known as Count Dante. In short, deadliest man alive. But it's also just a macho fantasy. If you're a Marvel Comics lover, then you would know that in old comics there used to be some sort of advertisement. Dante used to promote himself with these comics. His so-called famous move was called Poison Hand. It was a technique based on nerve centers and vital organs where someone could easily subdue their opponent. He made people believe that anyone who will master these tricks will be able to subjugate their opponents with just a single touch. But there was no truth behind it. He just wanted to earn a few extra dimes through these techniques. A fake Shaolin monk. Shaolin monks can be somewhat scary due to their martial arts obsession and their fighting abilities. But like I said, they are monks that are calm deep inside and don't show off their skills for reputational or fighting purposes. While on the other hand, we have this Chinese MMA fighter, Yi Long, who is also known to be a Shaolin monk. But the story is quite deceiving. He was no Shaolin monk, neither did he train with them. He studied kickboxing at the Shanghai Sports University and has never visited a Shaolin temple. All he wanted to do was earn some fame, but thanks to MMA coach Ramsey Dewey, who proved that Li Yong is a fake. Xu Xiaodong Remember Xu Xiaodong, who went to China to clear it out of fake martial artists in 2019? Well, his story ended up in tragedy. First, he took out a reputable Chinese Wing Chun master in less than a minute. Then he went out for 54-year-old Kung Fu master and a lot more. His story was fine until he accused Chen Xiao Wang, a fraudster, who was also a well-known Tai Chi grandmaster of China. He was litigated to issue an apology and was fined around $10,000. He was banned to possess a property or rent it. He wasn't even allowed to get a plane ticket either. Rafael Torre Rafael Torre is another example of fraud and dishonesty. His story consists of lies and smears. He claims that he'd won over 14 matches with no defeats in all pit tournaments, of which he doesn't have any proof. His bogus story caught the eye of Tanun bin Zayed al-Nanyan, an Arab sheik who invited him to Abu Dhabi's combat club. There he faced Bo Hirschberger, from whom he lost within just a minute. After losing, to keep up with his dignity, he paid a professional heavyweight, Ayoka Tianyu, from which he won through submission in an MMA fight in 2001. If that wasn't enough, he also claimed to be an ex-Navy SEAL. If you want another video on the fraudsters like these, press the like button so that we'll know you appreciated our video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting sports videos. Comment your thoughts down below about these fraudsters and who is the best at making things up. Of course.